Hello all YouTubers, I am the Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this weather presentation for June 15th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that you please do subscribe because sadly, tons of my watch time has been coming from unsubscribed viewers. We are on our way to our next goal of 600 subscribers and thank you guys so much, by the way, for 500 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 600 subscribers, all right? So please do uh, subscribe and also subscribe to every single one of you. Please watch the whole video as well as liking and sharing the video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So today we're going to be talking about a newly developed tropical disturbance. Um, most likely not going to become a named storm, but it is a tropical disturbance that could still develop some strength. And move up the Carolina coastline, and it's already producing very heavy rainfall. Georgia, but primarily East South Carolina, North Carolina, up through the Tidewater, Virginia. So let's get right into it. Here's a storm by the National Hurricane Center, sitting right off the coast. I'd say due east of just about where Savannah, Georgia is, um, is where the X is currently. And as of two o'clock, there's a small non-tropical low pressure system. It's a little surface low that's developing, located east of the Georgia coast. And it's, there is some disorganized showers and storms. Environmental conditions are not going to be the best for any, you know, significant development, but um, we could have this thing become subtropical. It can get some subtropical characteristics, half tropical storm, half, uh, half regular low pressure system. Uh, this storm will be moving inland uh, Tuesday afternoon or most likely Tuesday evening. Uh, but regardless of development, again, there's going to be heavy rainfall. There's going to be a lot of wind uh, with the storm here. So that's something um, we're going to have to watch a lot. Sorry about that, guys. I know it's, it's just gets, it gets dark. It's like it stays right for most of the day, and then all of a sudden it just starts getting dark really fast. So, but again, there is your storm staying off the Carolina coastline. 10% uh, chance of development, I mean, it's not the, but again, that's just the National Hurricane Center. There's many other different models and many other uh, features of, and maps we have to look at. It's not just the National Hurricane Center. It's not just what they say. Now, in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies, yeah, they're a little bit below average, but good thing is usually the waters are warm in this area anyway. So even though the waters are just a little bit below average, our water temperatures are still, I mean, right now where it's sitting, it's sitting in waters that are like about 80, 82 degrees. So it's sitting right up to Georgia course, coastline. So it's sitting right here currently. Um, but as it moves up to Carolina coastline, it might run into some upper 70s waters, which is definitely good for acquiring or developing a subtropical cyclone when those waters are near 80, but not quite, you know, not quite warm enough. If you look at the storm on satellite. No, this is not the storm right here. This is the upper level feature that is dropping from the north, dropping down. Uh, south here and there is some rain along with it but what's developing is right here is a little surface low developing off the coast that's what we're talking about and that's going to start to bring some rain uh, enhanced the rainfall south carolina north carolina but even the upper level low is already producing a, uh, a moisture surge and what's happening is this upper level low is having so much spin with it that it's drawing in moisture from the caribbean all the way up all the way up into north carolina into virginia so it's drawing a lot of moisture up um, but again, yours a little surface low. It's not much right now, but there is your surface low sitting right off the coast of Georgia there. That is what's going to continue to move up. And eventually by Tuesday, it's going to be inland North Carolina. So we'll see if this can briefly acquire some subtropical characteristics. All right, there's some tropical waves we're watching. All right, these are all tropical waves. All right, there's one here, but there's your surface low. All right, and there's your tropical wave right there off the, off the uh, southeast coastline. Um, the L does not mean depression. Okay. It's, just because just, just because an L is there does not mean tropical depression. That means that means it's a lower pressure system. If it was a, if it is a depression there, they will tell you. Um, but it's a regular lower pressure system staying over along the stalled front, so it's not moving much for now. But eventually, this low is going to start moving up to the north and east. It's going to make landfall in North Carolina. It's going to continue to move inland from there. All right. If we look at the cyclone of vorticity signature, I'd say there's a decent amount. It's not perfectly circular, but it's starting to get its strength together. I mean, I can definitely see it. On the uh, cyclonic vorticity signature. All right, here's your kind of like your energy from that upper level low. You got to start to see some surface load starting to develop. And if we can see these cyclonic vorticity values or stay where they are now, maybe start to go up a little bit. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna help to, uh, to really develop the storm. When you look at the wind shear, where the upper level low has been, that's where your wind shear is gonna be lower because that's where the upper level low has been tracking. Obviously, where the surface low is right now, there's a lot of wind shear, which is why if this does develop, it's going to be subtropical, not fully tropical. It'd be more like a subtropical depression or subtropical storm if it does develop. But still, I mean, not too, the wind shear isn't too bad. I mean, I call it 40, 50 knots. It's not horrible. 
I mean, we've seen 60, 70. I mean, we've seen much worse. But if that upper level low could have dropped down and really it, into the ocean, it really could help to calm those wind shear, uh, calm the wind shear. But it sadly hasn't been doing that. But wind shear still, regardless, I mean, we have dropped across the southeast coast. We have dropped 10 knots of wind shear of, uh, in the past 24 hours. So at least it, it has been trending down. Another reason is the dry air. I mean, everything's just kind of against the system here. Here's where a storm is located where the, by the X on the map there. X marks the spot. And as you can see, there's just dry air right on the system, if not right, you know, right wrapping around the system. It's not much of a, not much of a circulation right now. You take a look towards Africa. Take a look at this. You have never seen so much dry air. Like, that's the top of the meter right there. That's like, like, that's like borderline white coloring. Right off the northeast coast of Africa, right here. Because indicated by the modeling, there was so much, you know, calm shear. I mean, and then there was just so much dry air. So that's that's a lot of dry air. It's not a fully, it's not a big area in Africa, but it's right on the northern African, northwestern African coastline. That's a lot of dry air. That's like the as most like as much as you can get almost top of the meter. But if you look, we still got that upper level low that's drawing in um, the moisture, and also because of the stalled front it's sitting over. All right, that stalled front's also going to help to draw in some moisture as well. If we look at the modeling, you see where's the thing gonna go? Is it gonna really develop? Um, NAM model, I don't. I mean, it just keeps it, you know, hanging around. I don't say I don't really think the NAM model is gonna develop that much. You see, maybe at its lowest point, getting to about a thousand eleven millibars of pressure at best. But regardless, some very heavy rainfall. Uh, some to definitely, uh, some to definitely keep our eyes on. Especially if you live in South Carolina, if you live in North Carolina, um, making landfall, landfall was probably about a thousand twelve millibars of pressure according to the NAM three K model. Is your rain? Right there in Cape Hatteras. I mean, rainfall tools could still be six, seven, eight inches, and even more than that. But when all is said and done, then the storm moves inland. Uh, then it gets into Virginia, Central Virginia, Western North Carolina, the Appalachian Mountains eventually. Um, and this is all part of that flood threat that I was taught that I talked about in my uh, in my previous video. If you guys want to check that out, right in the top right. Oops, sorry guys, top right corner of your screen. I haven't, I haven't been playing in a while. But yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, go ahead and do that after this video. But if we take a look at the total accumulated precipitation. Yeah, it's a lot. And this, uh, keep in mind, this is the 18Z model run, so this is additional precipitation. Uh, for Cape Hatteras, I'd say a good, I'd say definitely, according to the NAM model, about 14, 16 inches. That's a lot of rainfall. All right, so this could be a deadly flood threat for the eastern shore of North Carolina. I don't think that rainfall is going to get 14, 16, 20 inches like they're saying by, by any means. But I think that the rainfall could total over 10 inches, definitely, once this is all said and done in any localized area. If you really get hit by the uh, or heavy rainfall in, a, in, a, in any kind of heavy rain band. We look at the um, surface winds and you can see, look at the NAM model. Okay, the 10 meter uh, winds, the surface winds right there. Just to the west of where that surface low is. Keep in mind, this is, oh boy, this is 10 o'clock. Um, this is 10 o'clock tonight. There is a little patch of yellow and even tad bit of orange. So I call that 30 to 33 knots of wind, which is just below a tropical or subtropical storm. Um, just it just missed it right here. All right, so that that's where it's gonna be at its closest pass to a tropical storm or subtropical storm. Then it loses some of its wind strength, but I th I definitely do agree with the NAM model here. If it's gonna develop for late tonight, it could develop uh, some subtropical characteristics or even some tropical characteristics. And then it moves north. Uh, there are some yellow patches though, so keep in mind there's gonna be little yellow dots that move on shore. So watch out North Carolina. You can still get some uh, sustained surface winds that could still be 30 knots. We could talk about. 34 mile per hour winds possibly, it's not out of the question, and some gusts past 40 miles an hour. They can still take out some, take down some trees, you can take out some power lines, definitely not out of the question. Uh, if we look at the NAM 12K model, just a different kind of NAM model, uh, painting a similar picture here, um, I don't think they make it quite as strong after landfall, only about 10, 16 millibars of pressure. Um, but still, nonetheless, regardless of this storm's development, the point is it's a, it's a tropical disturbance and there's a lot of heavy rainfall, Central Virginia, Eastern North Carolina here, um, and then more rainfall to come thereafter. Uh, just some more scattered showers and thunderstorms after the low moves through. NAM 12 cam model is definitely a lot more reasonable. Um, maybe maybe two to four inches additional for much of South Central Virginia, Eastern North Carolina, Central North Carolina, and then two to four inches, and then you got your little couple areas of six inches, some isolated spots. If you look at the uh, surface winds with the NAM 12 km model. As you can see, all those green areas means 25 mile per hour winds plus. So nonetheless, still some gusty winds, and then the winds are going to weaken according to the NAM 12 km model as this heads on shore. So 
I mean, I'd say in terms of wind strength, not in terms of rainfall, but in terms of wind strength, the storm would probably be at its strongest probably late tonight, most likely. All right, so if we go look at the cyclone of vorticity, because sadly, NAF 3 cams it doesn't do cyclone of vorticity signature, I guess because it's too high def in the way the model is, but the NAF 12 cam does provide. All right, and take a look at this. Look at it's a it's a mess. I get it. That's why if it, if this does develop, it's going to be subtropical, not tropical. But it's a mess. But there is definitely some spin among this mess. All right, we're standing right off the South Carolina coastline. There is definitely some there is definitely some spinning in the atmosphere. And if you and if you look. The rainfall will start turning, and these cyclonic vorticity, these bands start running into the Smoky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains, and we know that's bad because this contributes a lot of heavy rainfall. So what could happen is, I mean, these bands get pushed up along the Smoky Mountains, and then the water just runs off off the mountains because it helps the mountain helps for the rain and the, really the rising in the, uh, of the moisture in the atmosphere, and that really, and that's why some of the mountain mountains locations just see so much rainfall and. The way these cyclone vorticity bands are setting up, I think it's definitely possible. All right, and then all the and then we get a heat in the atmosphere, and then all the all the cyclone vorticity bands, all the moisture starts getting lifted northward. Not really much of a tropical system once it makes its way on shore. Ensemble base probability, we have some mixed ideas. Uh, all the models here, NCEP, FN, FNMOC, the the GEM model, the European model, um, they all indicate okay a, a zero uh, up to a ten percent chance of development off the southeast coast right here. Uh, nothing too special. Um, and there is some chance for development that's been sitting there for a while over the northern coast of South, South America. We're not going to keep our eyes on that. It's been there for a while. Um, but the um, if we look at, yeah, here we go. So this is the, another uh, ensemble model run here. And you can see here, here we go, 10 to 20% chance sitting right where that storm is pretty much located. Now, keep in mind, right now the storm is right here. Um, it's going to continue to move over this region where we can have a 10 to 20% chance, up to a 20% chance of development. It's still something to watch, all right? I mean, this tropical storm, it's again, main thread's gonna be rain, and second most, the second highest thread's gonna be some gusty winds and probably some rip currents. Storm surge, not gonna be an issue because this isn't really, you know, fully developed tropically yet. So we're gonna have to keep our eyes on it, all right? It's impacting Carolinas now, so definitely get your flood plan in place because there's gonna be a lot of heavy rainfall coming out of this. It's gonna be sitting there for a long time. So stay safe, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. I am Dweller Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.